the sky, yeah. arts. Yeah. You were telling me earlier on you'd already established yourself as an artist, but that must have given you a little yeah. bit of a well, help. Um, there was two things though, because I, w I was already selling like in this gallery, you know, and uh, and uh, so I had like a, already a, um, a following of people, and uh, uh, the shows were already sold out, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I had so in a way uh, when I saw this the the, the advert for this Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, there was one part of me really wanted to because I thought they're gonna they're gonna bring together you know artists were alone all the time and I thought they're gonna bring together like all these artists that are, like and at the time like I remember that on the first ones like many established artists applied um, and I thought I'm gonna be in, with a group of people really that are like at the you know high end yeah, you know, yeah. like, that, that really live off their, their art and stuff like yeah. that and. Um, mm -hmm. But then, when I actually thought about entering, like, there was also a side of me that was a bit like um, uh, it, w it was once you're in a gallery, right, and once you're already like selling and all that stuff. If you do one thing wrong on TV, like if you do one, you risk your whole career. And for someone who hasn't got one yet, it doesn't really matter. But I already had, I already sold out. I was already with this gallery, yeah, yeah. And, and it made me think like, are you sure you want to like you know? risk that and then yeah. do some rubbish on TV or something and then no one was going to come and buy your work anymore. But, you know, I felt like I've risked everything always. Were you so, quite nervous at the start of it all? Yeah. And then I hate being on TV and I hate talking to I hate my voice, I hate like everything like that. But well, you but, come across quite naturally but the thing is, But the thing is, mm. yeah, but it, when you see a documentary, you see like, you know, the finished result. I mean, yeah. The, I mean, I think that they've worked harder on me than they've worked on me. I thought the Alan joking. Cummings uh, yeah. one was absolutely fantastic. Wonderful but, piece but, of work. But, but the whole excitement of being an artist is like is exactly that. It's like you know doing something that nobody does, doing, mm. taking mm. that risk, like expressing whatever. And so I thought, you know, I might like lose out if I do something not like, good or whatever it is. I mean, I know that when I got there, I. They told me anyway, like this artist from Scotland, I don't can't remember his name, that had like, you know, the massive following and he had loads of, and he went in, he, he got nervous, he didn't do that well on the, on the program, and then it ruins his career in some way, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I got there, they told me that, but I just thought, look, I'm, I'm here, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm doing, I do it every day, you know, so I'm just going to do it, and that's it. And uh, I, I got in, and uh, it obviously it helped me, loads of people start following what I did and this and the other but it was different for me because I already had had a few years of like quite you know mm. relative success here in London. Did you and have to hone your technique in terms of no, timing no, 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 because no. No. obviously you only had four hours, was it four hours to, to complete? Yeah. I used to go to life drawing every day for seven years before. So, so you used to work in quick then? Yeah not every day but possibly four or five times a week which is a lot. Mm. Mm. So I used to life I, and for the last couple of years, <clears throat> I spent seven years painting on the same board as well. It's mm -hmm. a long time. So I painted, I don't know how many hundred paintings on that same piece of wood. And I would intentionally paint over it the next day so, so it's not precious to me. So I got used to it. Like, I knew that before I walked into the life drawing, into the studio, that I was going to completely paint over it. It doesn't matter how good it was. Mm -hmm. So, because I knew that I would risk, like, to a, so when I went to do the sky portraits, I just been seven years doing that every day. So, so you were prepared, me, and for me, painting in twenty minutes was yeah. twenty minutes was that like two years for me, really yeah. of time. It was like a ridiculous amount of time. So because I'd forced myself to try like a, a lot less than that and uh, try and get some results from it. So so then when I did the, the after the portrait artist thing, they gave me my own series to do. You know, I did. Uh, um, when I went to do Alan Cumming and then they gave me uh, Simply Red and you know, all yeah. these things. I mean, I had a lot less time then. It was like, uh, with the cameras and with everyone, it was a maximum of 20 minutes live. And in 20 minutes, really, if you're not used to it, like, that's the time that it takes to do like a, I don't know, the drawing over the nose and the mouth yes. and whatever it is, yeah? yeah? And these guys are moving as well. Like, yeah. So, I had to do a full finished thing in 20 minutes, and I mean 20 minutes as in like, they'd shut the cameras down and the person would leave. You know, that's the time that I've slotted. So I'd prepare, put the stuff up and look at my watch and say right, minute number one. And I had to with cameras, with questions and with an interview. Like, you know, 
I don't know how you did it. But you, I did. You did. But I did it. Yeah. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is that uh, speed can either like, you know time and the speed in which you do something, mm. how fast it is, like. Uh, you can either look at it as something negative or like actually like explore what speed is as an art work itself. So I did that. I thought, right, so I'm gonna check out, right, like all the good things about about working fast and there's so many. Like, you know, when you do a stroke that's really fast, like, you know, there's there's an effect it has on, on the surface that you can't replicate with any slow no. stroke. And there's an energy in that speed. That yeah. you can't replicate again. I think that's what came across on the Alan Cummings one, yeah. where you were, when you were painting to his uh, his movements yeah. on stage, yeah. and that was wonderful to see the brush stroke yeah. just going straight across the canvas. Like it doesn't allow your brain either to to you know when you're painting slowly, right, you have all this time to regurgitate, regurgitate, to see, to come back to this. In this amount of time, you have you haven't got the time. Mm -hmm. But if you do it enough, right, you adapt, and like humans adapt. To stuff and then as you're adapting from the beginning whilst you're doing it right you're seeing what's going to happen or what happened before what the, and the whole process becomes it's a different way and mm. but it's not any less effective it's not any less you know any less quality any less anything it's just an absolutely different way of like uh, of seeing it. and that like you know and that opens a new uh, like door to you yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so when i actually do the slow work you know the work mm. at the studio there's a lot of the new stuff that I learned from there happening with the old stuff. And, and then I think of surfaces that in a different way. Like now, which surface can I paint on? Like it's really just fast and slow already is, a, is, a, is an endless, you know. Uh, which substrate do you find flows the best? The aluminium that you obviously behind the I just like try different or? surfaces all the time. Yeah. It's not just one. Uh, mm. I mean, uh, and the layering, I try and find completely different ways of layering. I try and find maybe... Uh, Is it a combination of glazes? I've, I've tried... I try and stay away from art shop stuff. Yes. Yeah, because, because they've got some very good stuff, obviously. I've tried many of these mm. things. But, um, but why glazes? Do you know, it, it's been used forever, right? And yeah, it's been... Yeah. All artists in the history of art, you know, of uh, painting have used glazes in this way and this way. But, mm. It's not the only way, it's just the way the, that yeah. we know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm trying to discover like, why you know, glaze, why this, why that, why does it have to be a board or a canvas? Why does it have to be? So it doesn't have to really. So I'm trying to find like, new stuff all the time. So you're not constrained by what? No, the art all, world absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Obviously I want surfaces that are going to be durable. And I, so I check stuff, you know, and uh, I've got like, I need expert. Uh, advice. I just go and you know, talk to a scientist if I have to. I don't mind. But mm. the thing is that at the end of the day, um, I'm trying to find like a new stuff. And and you know, m many times I walk into um, into art fairs or you know, exhibitions or where it is, and uh, you know, there are many creative artists out there. Many people are you know, amazing mm. and all that stuff. But but I tend to see that that that, that what happens right and. And the response to it is, in a way, um, a result of of the surface or the materials that they're using. That actually can, you know, the idea can go further. But yeah, yeah. there is there is something that, like you know, is 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 innate in what they they're using. And and you know, I go in and there's a you know uh, an installation that has a video with an old screen, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, painting that's done on canvas. Uh, I don't know, um, uh, the aluminium boards, as I said, I've seen it like lots of times in the uh, um, you know, drawing with charcoal and paper, with, mm. with whatever other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's the paper itself, like paper, and then you think... Yes, yeah, so I've noticed about so, your Darwin no, no, works with the pen and ink a, and the paper, it's, it's a nice... Yeah, but there's a lot more nice stuff there that's yeah. not, like even the paper itself, like... Uh, it's a, but what I, what I mean is that I, I'm trying to find some new stuff all the time. So hopefully, hopefully, one day it won't be paper. It won't be like, uh, it won't be charcoal. It won't mm -hmm. be like, a, yeah. it, and, and it won't be, and those new things will just dictate to me somehow in their essence and in their, you know, in their, uh, in their chemical, you know, um, 
structures or yes, where it is, yeah, like yeah. how the, these new uh, materials work by themselves and they will give me some mm. kind of new way mm. of working with them. And it's almost like meeting new people, like in some yeah, way. Yeah. You have to yeah. learn about them too, yeah. too. And that makes the whole thing exciting all the time. So, so the, the only thing that I cannot do right, is to carry on what I was doing. That's like my only thing. Like, so, what, so once it's finished, that's gone. Once it's finished, it's, it's not the subject matter. I'm no, saying. No. As in, like, once I finished, like, uh, exploring maybe um, a surface or uh, something. I mean, you, you can carry on with something forever. But I'm saying that, like, uh, uh, once I re once I notice that I have a, that I'm repeating or doing repetition in any way or doing anything like that. Um, oh. It might seem mm. the same to someone else when they walk in, they might mm. see a painting and say, well, I can still recognize it's you. Now, obviously, like... That's your style. But it's me doing it. Yeah. So it's yeah. going to be like a, a visual language that yeah. I've, like, uh, that, that I've uh, you know, developed that's yes. going to be in the painting. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, right, it's a completely different thing. Like, you know, I'm trying to do something that maybe is not evident. And that matters the most to you, doesn't it? And that is what excites me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that art is a... You know, painting or, or, or sculpture or, or whatever, any, any, any form of art, um, mm. is very similar to music, as in, in this way. It's a really delicate thing. And, you know, it's not about numbers. It's very, it's very important, really, that the artist itself keeps in mind. It's not about numbers. It's not about, like, can you do an exhibition? Can you fill a space? Can you produce 20? Like, it's very dangerous to do that because, because when, when that happens in music, you, you hear, like, a... A rock band or mm. an indie band or mm. whatever, when they get together at the beginning, they're so excited about their music and about this sound that comes out and about, and they write this album and the lyrics are exciting, everything's there. They don't give a shit really no, about no. Like, what people are going to think or whatever. Yeah. And suddenly they create this album and it's brilliant, right? And you listen back to it and you're like, wow. Yeah. It's interesting, they the, were it's interesting the analogy you say yeah. about music and art. Yeah, but they, they were full of passion. You've got an empty that. space yeah. for music when yeah. there's no sound and you've got an empty white canvas. Yeah, yeah. And then, right, and then they do really well and then no, no, like they connect with everyone mm. and then the, the uh, record label says, right, okay, I want another album, but make sure you've got two songs like this one and we need 12 songs by the 21st of January and this and the other. And they do this rubbish album. Yeah, written to order. Or paid and to they order. Can't, no. You see, and that part is the dangerous part. Mm -hmm. And I have to stay, I mean, I stay well clear of that. Like, so, so I only paint right, what I am absolutely passionate about. It's like trying to keep myself in that album, that first one, all the time, you know. And uh, if the gallery have 200 people waiting for something, and there's 500 next year, I don't, that has no. to, I, it's separate. Mm. And I keep it completely away from what I'm doing. And it's, I mean, they can tell you, I mean, I've had people, I don't do commissions, and I've had like, I don't know how many people wanting, in, wanting yeah. for ridiculous amounts of money for this. But I've just honestly, seriously, like just put it aside and thought, right, I'm, do, I'm on a kind of journey to do this and that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And I have to make sure, right, all the time that I'm like that, you know, that it's a... Uh, so, I saw... Well, that's what makes you special, is that you're not selling your soul for the commerciality of no, art. No, because no, art no. can be quite commercial, can't it, in, yeah. in well, some I'm, shape? I'm, I mean, you're earning I mean, a living from it. I mean, I'm earning a really good living from it. And I, and I think it's a highly successful, like whole team thing, you know, I've got the gallery, I've got other teams that work with me and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's been great, but, um, but obviously I'm not, like, I think I'm a good businessman as well, I think I'm a good, like, you know, I think I know what, like, I've been an illustrator before, I've done lots of wrong stuff before, I've done, mm -hmm. yeah, so, mm -hmm. um, and I'm aware of stuff, and of course I want to make money, of course, but also, right, of course I want to make money, of course I want to be successful, what human really doesn't want to be successful, no, exactly. I mean, every human wants success mm -hmm. of some kind. But what is success and how... Well, how is it measured? How is it measured and how yeah. is it, you know, so... Um, I mean, we did some great charity stuff, which I enjoy doing. Yeah, uh, We do some big projects um, that, where we give back in some ways to the people that have... Um, I mean, I go to other countries and I'm inspired by things and I look at, And, you know... You've recently been to China, is that right? Yeah, I have, yeah. So I do... Every year I do a few countries and, like, you know, and I try and... Uh, explore stuff and and give back there and I think it's like this there's this circle that happens that you have to it's like inevitable if you don't right you can't really do anything by yourself really if you think about it mm. uh, you need all the people you need them and 
everybody, like I hear so many people like, you know, say, oh, now you've made it now and you've done this and you've got like, mm, you know, mm. you can buy anything you want and, mm. it's, and it's absolutely got nothing to do with that. Like, it's fantastic to have it. But yeah. that's not your main drive. I was really happy before when, before yeah. it, this, you know, and it just, <laughs> It just, I started off thinking, right, you've got to give one thing for everything you get. You've got to, so there was these rules at the very beginning when there was nothing. Mm. And I kept them all the way till now. Exactly. And I will ca carry on keeping them all the way to there. And that is my way, you know. And if, if you know, other people think, oh, well, you should be in this outfit, or you should be in doing this, or you should be in that. Uh, but all those should be's are really. Well, that's them know. telling you what you should no, be. No, no, but I'm saying that, like, uh, yeah. If, if you go there, you get a high accolade. If you go here, like, you know, some critic is going to say this about you. I but I never did anything for that. The critic, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'll but, knock uh, that out, folks. Don't worry about that. We'll bleep that one out. <laughs> no, but, you know, the, whatever critic it is, or whatever, you know, whatever entity it is, or where I should be here, or should be there, or whatever, yeah. it is, I'm absolutely uninterested in that, mm. Really. Mm. I, it's, this journey is mine, and maybe if that's not the right way for me, I, I find a new one or I reinvent one, you know, and, uh, and that's what changes really um, uh, art. If you look at the history of art, really, like, you know, mm. you need like a few people to get together and, and do something else, you know, and I, that's what I want to do. I want to uh, I can, you know, collaborate with a few people and, yeah. and have new ideas that maybe other artists that have just yeah, started yeah, off yeah. might go a different direction. So there's not, there's not all just one way. Like that. And these one ways that have been selected already for, for years right, are, are, are under a panel. And this panel decides everything. And I don't think that's right. You know? like there should be like no, many yeah. other ways. And, yeah. uh, you know, if there isn't, like, it's time to, like, maybe... If you were going to give some advice to budding artists, art students, or artists of any age, really, yeah. what, what, any, any yeah, piece of... Yeah, there's only one nugget thing. Nugget? Yeah, yeah. Advice? Yeah, I'd have one, one advice. <clears throat> as soon as you feel in a studio that you're painting, right, to impress someone else, right, as soon as you're sitting down, like, trying to finish the next piece, right, to have three pieces or four pieces to impress, like you know, a group of people, mm. this or the other, and you're not really having fun. You're not going to the studio and thinking, like you know, I can't wait, right, to see what happens here or there. Like, stop what you're doing. That's my advice. Okay, so uh, one of your works here, Christian, in the Charles Darwin series. Can you tell us a little bit about um, this, one? this one? Is called uh, A Line in the Balance, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, I did quite a few of these, and basically. Uh, Darwin says that uh, there's only a thin, he doesn't use the word line, I think he used it something else, but it, there's a line in the balance between one uh, species surviving and another one not surviving, you know, and it's, uh, it's a, you know, it, it was a, a really, um, he says anyway that it's, a, it's really difficult for a species to survive in nature. So my interpretation of a line in the balance was, was like, you know, having a physical line in the work. Mm -hmm. And then balancing out with uh, with the tonal areas. So I have tonal and non-tonal areas, space and one line that makes it that holds the tonal part together. So this one I've got one line that goes down here in charcoal. It's a really strong line. Yeah. And then the rest of it is a. Uh, so this, this bold line is charcoal. Yeah. yeah. But it, that bold line does quite a lot. It holds these two sides together when they're like they're zinc. It's, it's, yeah. it's virtually yeah. virtually done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, what paint? What paint have you used on this? It's just, uh, it's, it's lots yeah. of stuff. Yeah, lots of the stuff. papers. I've tried different papers. It's been tinted in a special way. Like you know, I've used uh, something where the paint can slide um, when it's a wash. I've used it. So this, this uh, at the end is oil on paper. So this, this part here, like you know, there's some parts that have like oil on paper. Right. Um, I did experiment with you know with different uh, materials before I started them, and uh, you know, this is what I for me worked best. Um, what was the paper suspended on when you were working? Did you have it on a board? Or no, 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 it was stretched. Stretched? Yeah. So it's soaked in a bath and then stretched. Yeah. So that had, there's no waving, so it can take anything. Because yeah. I remember my art school days, yeah. we used to stretch the paper with the brown tape yeah, around the edge of it. It's done with brown tape. Stretch it out like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing. And the black and white also, um, I decided to go for, although it's not really black and white, it's a uh, warm and cold, really. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's a warm and cold grays uh, yeah. working together. But, uh, but um, I chose black and white because I read a long time ago. Actually, it wasn't that I read it. I, I actually heard a talk by this photographer I've been to 
to all these war places and uh, he usually like uh, um, printed his work in black and white because obviously the context yeah. was the important thing and he wanted people to focus on what was happening and colour was a distraction for that and because this was the Darwin theory thing and I wanted people to like try and look at the title yeah. and like try and think about it. I just took the colour off. And I, I think the right. monochrome works beautifully in the whole series. I mean they're all monochromatic aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So it is that pen and ink yeah. feel that you know that Darwin exactly. could have yeah. done sketched it himself yeah. on the on the on no, the beagle. Right, it's done with my own language. You know, yeah, that, 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 that's the, yeah. the important thing. So yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Oh well, congratulations, Thank you. and uh, hope everything goes well for your future, all your work, and uh, thanks very much, guys. And uh, the exhibition with Christian is on to the 14th of November. Please come down and have a look. And a big thank you to Rachel here at the Clarendon Gallery for allowing us to come in to have a chat to Christian today. So if you'd like to come and see Christian's work, please come in and have a look. It's absolutely yeah. stunning.